Hello everybody, how's it going? My name is Sergio and welcome to a new Unity tutorial. This is the first part of a two-part series in which we're gonna look into how we can make our character shit by using a couple of scripts and we're gonna add uh, some bullets, we're gonna add some muzzle flash, we're gonna learn how to manage the dealing damage to other enemies as well as making a little animation to imitate the recoil from the weapon. So first of all as usual if uh, you go down below in the description you will find an asset package with the project as I have it at the moment so all you need to do is to go to file and new project and once you have a new project in the 2D press preset you can double click on the asset package import everything and you'll be in the same spot as I am right now. Cool, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is to implement the actual shooting mechanic. We're gonna create a script called player shoot inside of the soldier game object. So navigate to it, select it, and then down here click on add component, new script, and we're gonna call it player shoot. Now let's open it up in Visual Studio. We will start by deleting the start and update methods, because we will need a few variables. The first one is going to be a reference to a game object named bullet prefab that will be our bullet. Another one is a reference to a transform named weapon tip that will be the origin of the bullets. We will need three public floats, one fire rate that will default to 5, one damage that will default to 25, and one range that will default to 100. A public layer mask named what to hit that will let us choose what layers we want to be affected by the bullets. A private float named time fire that will default to zero and a reference to the player movement script in our character that takes care of the movement. Now we will create an awake method to get a reference to the player movement script. The awake method gets called before the start method therefore it makes the perfect place to get reference to other components. We will also create a public method called onshoot that returns void and takes no arguments. This method will be called from the player input script to keep all input detection in one script. Inside this method we will first check if fire rate is zero and if it is we will make the weapon shoot in single fire mode. Inside of the if statement we call the shoot method that we will create shortly. If fire rate is not zero then we want to check if time.time, .time, so the time since the start of the game, is bigger than time fire, which is a float that we will use to set a timer to let the script know when it should fire. If that is the case, then we want to update time fire by making it equal to time.time .time plus one divided by fire rate, and then call the shoot method. In the shoot method, we will first get the position of the weapon to transform and save it to a new vector2 variable that we will call fire pause. We also need another vector2 named dear that will be the vector2.left or vector2.right depending on whether we're facing right or left. We can use the variable facing right from the player movement script to know in what direction the player is currently facing. We will assign the values with a one line if statement. To do a one line if statement we first declare the variable as usual and then we put an equal sign and the condition that we want to test for in parentheses followed by the question mark. Then we put the value that will be assigned if the condition is true, followed by a double colon. The next value will be the one assigned if the condition is not true, so false. To detect whether we hit an enemy, we will use a raycast 2D. We will pass fire pause as the origin, dir for the direction, and range for the range of the raycast. We will pass what to hit as the layer mask, on which the raycast 2D will work. To better see what we are doing, we will use debug.drawArray, which will allow us to see where the raycast 2D is going. We need to pass firepaws as the origin and dir for the direction multiplied by the range. We will set the color to blue and one second for the duration. Cool, so with that done, uh, we are ready to go ahead and test it out and see if uh, this mechanic is actually working. But first we need to call the onshoot function uh, from over here from an actual script, from another script, and the script we're gonna call it from is actually is gonna be player input to keep everything organized. So if we open it up and in the update function you'll see there's an if is not jumping, so below that we want to put another if statement. So we will create an if statement in which we will create, we will check for input, so input.get button down, and we will check fire1 for the key. Now we also need to check whether fire rate is set to zero. 
if fire rate is set to zero, we will make our character shoot in single fire. And if it's not, we want to make it automatic. So to check the fire rate from the player shoot script, we need to reference it up here. So I'm just going to copy this line and I'm going to change player movement to player shoot. And we're going to call this C shoot. And let's update the comment and get a reference of it here in the awake function. So get component player shoot. Perfect. And now here we can put and if C shoot dot fire rate equals zero, then we want to uh, C shoot dot on shoot. So we want the call the shoot function. Now, if we are not looking into uh, firing in single fire mode, so if the fire rate is bigger, we actually want to check. We want to put another if statement in which we're going to check for input, get button, and we're going to check once again for fire one, which is the left mouse button. And we're also going to check if the fire rate is bigger than zero. If that's the case, then we want to again call on shoot. The difference between get button down and get button is that if we keep the left mouse button pressed, get button down will still return true, but get button down won't. This event is only called whenever we actually click the button. Once it, either we keep it pressed or we release it, this will start uh, returning false, meaning no, the button hasn't been clicked. Instead, get button down will still be firing. And if the fire rate is more than zero, then we just are going to keep calling the on shoot function. Perfect. So now we can go back to the Unity editor and let's hit play. And let's test out that this mechanic works for now. Okay, so we can see that our player moves and if we click, nothing happens yet. And that is because we forgot to put an origin. So we need to create the weapon tip transform that will serve as the origin for the bullets to be spawned on. Inside of the bones ga uh, game object and all the way down to the left hand and then the M16 game object, we're gonna create an empty game object by right clicking and then create empty that we're gonna call weapon tip. And we're gonna move it all the way up here to the tip of the M16. Now we go back to the soldier game object and we drag the weapon tip transform onto the weapon tip variable. We can save the scene and hit play again. Now if we click, still nothing happens and that is because over here debug.ray will only work if we have the gizmos selected because this is a debug function. So let's check gizmos and you'll know you have checked it because you'll see the colliders. And now if you check, you'll see those blue lines coming out. If I drag the game window down here and we split it, we can see how the range variable affects that line. If we were to increase the range to 200, then the line would go much further. Perfect. So now we can get out of play mode and let's bring that game tab back. And also let's change the what to hit layer mask to everything for now. And this is great and all, we know that it's working, but we don't have any bullets right now. So let's go ahead and start making a bullet. We're gonna create the bullet by right clicking here on the hierarchy and creating an empty game object that is not gonna be parented to anything for now. And actually I just parented it to the soldier. There it goes. We're gonna change the name to bullet and we're gonna use a line renderer component to render the bullet. So let's add a component, click on line renderer and this component is a component that you may have never seen before. The line render will simply render a line based on a few parameters that we pass. So it's like creating a sprite, but with a lot of variables that we can tweak. We're gonna use it in a very, very simple way. To get started, let's disable cast shadows because we don't need it to cast any shadows nor receive them. So let's uncheck that one too. Here is asking for a material. So let's go ahead and create one. Let's right click on the tutorial folder that only project view. And we're gonna click on create folder and we're gonna call it materials. Open it up and inside of it, let's create a material and let's call it bullet matte. We're going to change the shader to sprites default 
and go back to the bullet and now just drag the material onto the element 0 of the materials list. You'll see that it's added down below here. Now we're still not seeing anything. To actually see something and get an idea of what we're doing, we're gonna drag the x value of the element 1 in the positions list. This might be closed for you, so make sure it's open. Just drag it up, and you'll see a white box appear from the origin. It's not following the transform at the moment. To make it follow, we just need to uncheck use world space, and that will appear wherever the origin of the game object is. And we're also gonna tweak a few settings because this doesn't really look like a bullet. Let's change the width to 0.09, and we're also gonna use this curve down here to give it a bullet trail like effect. So let's drag down this little red box on the left to about 0.2. Now double right click, double left click, sorry, on the right side and drag it all the way up. But I don't like that boxy end. To change it, let's just change end cap vertices to 2. You'll see that it's rounded off. Now we're also going to change the color because bullets are not really white. So by clicking on it, we're going to create a gradient. The buttons, the buttons at the top take care of the alpha values. The ones at the bottom take care of the colors. In the top left, we're going to bring down the alpha to 0%, and we're going to change the color to a yellow, an orangish, dark orange color. On the left, we're going to change the color to a bright yellow. We're also going to add another color down here, and we're going to set it to be poly orange. This doesn't look too convincing, so I'm going to change this color to red, and then the orange, I'm going to bring it up, and I'm actually going to change the orange to a yellow. That looks a little more convincing, but actually I'm going to bring down a little that red value, and there it goes. That looks more like a bullet. We're now going to make this bullet a prefab so that we can instantiate it from a script. Go into the prefabs folder and drag the bullet game object onto the project tab. Now we can delete it from the scene. Selecting the soldier game object, we're going to scroll down to the player shoot script and we're going to drag that bullet prefab onto the bullet prefab slot down in the player shoot script and save the scene. For now, we're not instantiating anything and we're just drawing a line. So we need to go back and add a few functionalities so that this actually works. Let's comment out the debug.draw array because we're not going to need it anymore. And here we're going to create a new function that is going to return void and it's going to be called draw bullet. It's going to take no parameters. And the first thing we need to do is we need to keep in mind that our character may be facing left or right. We already took care of that over here in the shoot function. However, for the bullet, we're going to do it in a slightly different way. We're going to use a quaternion variable called rot to flip the bullet left or right depending on where the character is facing. We're going to use a one line if statement just like we did up here so we can actually just copy it and paste it and instead of assigning vectors we're going to assign quaternion. So let's write quaternion.euler and the euler function will let us use a vector 3 as an angle. In this case, if the player is facing right, we don't need to modify the rotation, so we just want to set it to 0, 0, 0. If the player is facing left, though, we want to flip the bullet around the y-axis. So we're going to write 180 here for the y-axis. Good. Now we can go ahead and instantiate the bullet. So we're going to use instantiate, passing the bullet prefab as the object, the weapon tip dot position as the position to spawn it on, and we're going to pass rot as the rotation. Last, we want to call the draw bullet function inside of the shoot function. So now let's go back into Unity and hit play. If we now fire our weapon, you'll see that we have some pretty cool bullets coming out, but they don't move. So we need to take care of that. Also, if we make the bullets move, they're going to get off the screen and keep and keep going until infinity. So they're pretty much always going to stay as they are right now. If you take a look at the hierarchy, you see we have a bunch of bullets here that are not going to disappear. We need to take care of that. So let's go to the bullet prefab. Let me drag it back into the hierarchy and I'm going to add a component, new script, and I'm going to call it bullet movement. I'm going to open it for editing and I'm going to get rid of both 
of the start function. Here we want to have a couple of variables. The first one is going to be a public int called speed. This will determine the speed of the bullet. We're going to default it to 250. We're also going to create a public float called time to destroy, which we're going to default to three float to three, and that is going to take care of how long it will take for the bullet to auto destroy itself. We're going to start the coroutine to auto destroy it as soon as the bullet is enabled. So we're going to use the on enable function and we're going to say start coroutine auto destroy. The functions we usually write are processed from start to finish in one frame. Coroutines on the other side are executed at one frame and processed over a number of frames. Coroutines allow us to pause the execution of the function until a condition is met. We do this using the yield keyword, passing an object that describes the condition to be met. For this tutorial, we will mostly use new wait for seconds, which will make the coroutine pause for a certain amount of seconds. To define a coroutine, we must set enumerator as the return type, followed by the name of the function and the parameters that we want to add. To start the execution of a coroutine, we have to use the start coroutine function. Calling a coroutine like you will normally call a function will fail in executing it. And we're going to pass time to destroy as a parameter. Now we need to create that coroutine. So let's go down here below update and we're going to say enumerator called out to destroy. And the parameter is going to be a float, which we're going to call time. And inside of it, we just want to yield, return, new, wait for seconds. So we just want to wait for the amount of seconds that have been passed as a parameter. And then just destroy the game object. So destroy and game object. Now, now that that's taken care of, we can take care of the actual movement of the bullet. We're going to use transform.translate passing the vector a uh, vector 3 dot right times time dot delta time to make sure is a smooth movement and we're gonna pass the speed as well so it's gonna be the vector right as the direction time dot delta time multiplied by speed that should be enough so we can go back into unity and we can see down here that our script has compiled successfully now we just hit apply on the prefab and we can delete the game object from the scene. So let's save the scene and hit play. If we fire, now we see the bullets coming out. And if you take a look at the project, uh, the hierarchy, you can see that they auto destroy. The last part of this tutorial will be how we can render a muzzle flash to give it some more realism. If you go into the sprite soldier folder, you're gonna find a muzzle flash image. Let's drag that onto the scene and get a little closer and we're gonna position it right on the tip like so we're gonna change the name instead of muzzle flash like it is right now we're just gonna call it muzzle flash we're gonna drag it under the M16 now we need to take care of making it transparent or visible depending on whether or not we're shooting we will do this by going into the soldier game object and opening the player shoot script and let's create a new function that is going to be a coroutine that will be called muzzle flash we're going to pass a float called duration as a parameter and inside of this function we want to first make the muzzle flash visible then wait for the amount of seconds and then make it invisible again but we don't have a reference to the render in the muzzle flash so up here we're gonna add a new field that we're gonna call this is gonna be a sprite render variable that we're gonna call muzzle flash rend now in the wake function we we'll want to make sure that the muzzle flash is not visible so we're gonna say muzzle flash rend dot color and we're gonna assign a new color variable which is gonna be zero 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 so it's going to be black and with 0% alpha. In the muzzle flash coroutine, we we'll want to make it visible. So let's say muzzle flash color equals new color. And we're going to make it white with an alpha value of 100 or actually 255. 
Now we want to yield, return, and you wait for seconds to wait until the time specified by the duration has been fulfilled and then we want to make it invisible again. So we're, I'm just gonna copy this line and instead of being 111, it's gonna be 000. To give it some more realism and make it a little bit more interesting to look at, we're also gonna flip the sprite on the across the horizontal axis. We can achieve this, but by saying muscle flesh rend dot game object dot transform and we're gonna use the rotate function. In the rotate function, we can pass a vector three, which is gonna be the new rotation. We want to flip the image across the X axis. So it's basically gonna be mirrored horizontally. We can achieve these by passing random dot range. And we're gonna say a number between zero and two. And we're gonna multiply that by 180. And then the rest is gonna stay the same. And this is why this works. Random down range will return a number, in this case between zero, so it's gonna return either zero or one, because whenever you pass two integers, the minimum, as you can see down here, it's inclusive, but the maximum is not included. So between, if we say zero and two, it's gonna be between zero, it's gonna be either zero or one. If it's zero, then when multiplied by 180, it will still return zero and it will keep its original rotation. If we get a one instead, then is gonna multiply by 180 and this will become 180 therefore mirroring or flipping horizontally the image. We can now call the muzzle flash function over here by saying start coroutine muzzle flash and we're gonna pass 0.02f as the duration. If we go back into unity and we hit play now you will see that this doesn't work because we forgot to put the reference so let's just drag the muzzle flash onto the muzzle flash rend variable and click play again. Now you'll see that whenever we fire, the muzzle flash will appear. If I drag this down and we take a closer look in the scene view, you'll see how the image is sometimes flipped horizontally. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below telling me what do you want to see next or any questions that you may have, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next video.